Would you please welcome our headliner tonight, escape artist Rick Maisel, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rick Maisel. I'm a professional magician and escape artist. Escape artists are always looking for tricky situations. I'm kind of an adrenaline junkie. So this is the best job for me. My first original escape was hanging beneath a hot air balloon right before the International Balloon Fiesta in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I'm also the current world record holder for the upside down straight jacket escape. And after five decades of chasing danger, he has found one of the most perilous traps yet. In 1937, the first domestic washing machine made its appearance in homes across America. But climb inside and this mundane appliance can kill. Just ask Rick Mazel. I'm the only person in the world that can escape from handcuffs and leg irons in a commercial spinning wash machine. Completely full of soap and water, no one else has survived without serious injury or death. Believe it. Or not. Well, I kind of got the idea watching video footage of fraternity brothers that would get in the dryers and go for a spin. I thought, wow. If somebody was to try that in a wash machine, that would be a neat twist to Houdini's underwater escapes. I've been interested in magic actually since I was seven years old. My dad would help write the routines for my act. I'd come out on the stage and I'd go. One day I gave my father a bath. Ever since, I've been sponging off him. Rick quickly progressed, taking a trick made famous by Harry Houdini and pushing it to the extreme. I performed the Houdini milk can escape. And in addition to the padlocks on the can, we also arc welded. First time, actually, that I performed it for a national television appearance. I was underwater for about two minutes and 50 seconds. It was about a minute longer than I was planning. I started using my head as a battering ram and both my fists. And after about a minute, I had an out-of-body experience. I had actually asked God to let me just get my emergency crew in to kind of help me. But at that point, um, I pushed up on the can and it broke it free. <laughs> Rick challenged Houdini's legacy once and nearly paid the price. But the risk of death will never stop him. Today, he'll put his own spin on another classic Houdini escape. Being inside a running washing machine is dangerous enough. These are real locks, no handcuffs. Rick gets in with his hands and feet bound by five different sets of shackles. He does everything genuine. He does everything real. He doesn't use gimmick cuffs. He's doing the real deal. And it's dangerous. It's scary. Not only is this stunt dangerous because he's in a washing machine, there's water, he's circulating, but the cuffs, as he's picking them, are now projectiles in the washing machine, banging him, hitting him, causing injury. And I have to escape before the deadly spin cycle. It'll kill me in three to five seconds. The forces exerted inside a washing machine during the spin cycle are equal to 77 Gs or 77 times the force of the Earth's gravity. Astronauts only experience three Gs during a rocket launch. Six Gs can cause a normal person to pass out. And 20 Gs, 20 Gs will kill you. Rick only has two minutes before the washing machine enters the deadly spin cycle, and his blood is literally pulled out of his body by the centrifugal force. The stunt could easily go wrong. If Rick were to pass out while he's inside the washing machine, he'd have no way to signal us to open the door. 
No one should try this at home, not kids or adults. See, as I'm crawling into the wash machine, I'm just kind of going through the routines that I know in my mind I need to do to survive. I have extensive training in transcendental meditation and self-hypnosis. I use that actually to slow my heart rate down so that I require less oxygen in my blood when I'm performing the escapes. Go. When the washing machine gets turned on. We have a timer going. Get the water in. I'm immediately feeling the G-forces of the machine, and it doesn't like slowly start going 50 RPMs. It immediately starts turning at that speed. Rick has just two minutes before the machine enters the spin cycle. It's 30 seconds. If he passes out due to the spinning or lack of oxygen, he won't be able to signal for his release. It's 45 seconds. Okay. Ryan, should we call it? I have to Give it a minute. I don't think he's signaling yet. He's still working on the cuffs. Is he moving? 120. 120, Rick. That's it. Let him out. Awesome. Yeah, that is. <laughs> yeah. Woo! You got it. <laughs> Rick isn't your average performer. I think in the future, people will be copying Rick. There's no limits to my imagination on where I think my escapes can lead. And I'd still like to do an escape in space if given the opportunity. About 5.4 million people are bitten by snakes each year, resulting in more than 100,000 deaths. Countless more are maimed from the toxic effect of reptile venom. But for one man, this deadly substance is what he lives for. I think I've had like 23 different species of snakes in my lifetime. I had a cocktail of venoms. For the last 30 years, 52-year-old Steve Ludwin has been injecting dangerous amounts of snake venom, convinced that the toxic cocktail is the key to the fountain of youth. Believe it or not. When I was like 10 years old, my father took me down to the Miami Serpentarium. You could go watch this guy called Bill Host milk cobras. The object now is to move the cobra to an open position where Bill will attempt to grasp him just behind the narrow hood. He was the first Westerner to start injecting himself with snake venom. Host injected so much venom over his career, it was said he developed an immunity to the toxic substance. But more than that, it may have extended his life he died from natural causes at the age of 100. By years of doing this, it's possibly slowed the aging process down. I think he was onto something. In 1987, Steve moved to London, where he found the perfect place to pursue his passion for poison. My first job in London was working in a place called the Vivarium. Basically, they imported venomous reptiles and scorpions and spiders for universities and stuff like that. With unlimited access to the objects of his fascination, Steve began to milk snakes and inject their venom, just like his idol, Bill Host. The first time I started, it was like late 1988. I just took a small amount and Put it, got it into my blood and just, you know, felt it burning immediately and then kind of swelled up and I got scared and I just had incredible discoloration and bruising. It was definitely playing around with death. But Steve kept on injecting. The more I tried it, you know, the more confident I got with it and I could see with my own eyes that something was happening. I would take it and for a good, you know, eight hours, I felt charged. I was like ready to go. It seemed to really sort of give me some kind of energy that wasn't there without it. But the charge does come at a steep price. I've had many accidents. I have some scars all over my body. I've had cobra venoms that ate into my leg. I could see the bones in my leg. It just rotted the flesh. 
it's really dangerous. People would look at my arms, and my arm will look like something out of, you know, like a zombie, something out of Evil Dead. Steve is going to demonstrate his method for milking with a Pope's tree viper, one of the deadliest snakes in Asia. One bite can introduce massive quantities of neurotoxin, causing paralysis and even death. You have to get the venom, so that's, you know, milking the snake, which you, you have to get the snake behind its head very carefully. <laughs> and then present the snake to the little glass. And it, it deposits the venom. Once I've milked the snake and put the snake safely back in its cage, I basically get a syringe and I draw the venom up in the syringe. I just put the venom onto my skin, the raw venom, and then I'll just poke it through. So you're just getting like a small amount. Steve believes after all these years, he's found a pathway to the fountain of youth. It's just been guarded by vipers. I have this theory that by injecting this snake venom, it's exercising my immune system. I don't get colds or flu. I've just, I just don't get ill like other people do. I had some doctors doing tests on me. When I was like 42 years old, I scored as like a 28 year old. They were baffled. I've altered my body and there's the possibility that it actually slows down the aging process. Though that theory hasn't been studied yet, Steve is participating in some cutting edge research to see if his blood has changed enough to eliminate deaths by snake bite. I'm working with a group of scientists and they're doing this project where they are basically farming my antibodies that I've developed in the hope of making a new antivenom from my blood to be involved in a project that is hopefully going to save lives. You know, it's a great job. 우주에서 가장 재미있는 채널 디스커버리